Hello, it's Myra here, and this tutorial is going to look at how we can add the zigzag border to our project. Here we have a finished example of our zigzag border, and you can see how it goes around the corner. Our zigzag border consists of 10 rounds of crocheting, and we are working in the round this time. But don't worry if you haven't done a mosaic crochet border before, that's what this tutorial is about, to hold your hand every step of the way. The pattern consists of a chart and written instructions. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be working from the chart. So looking a little bit more detail at our pattern, I've already said our pattern consists of 10 rounds and the pattern repeat is 4 stitches. It's because of this small pattern repeat which allows us to use this particular border on any size of project. If we look at the right hand side of our chart here, we can see on rounds 3 and 4 there is some writing. And these two rounds are the rounds that we're going to use to work out what our stitch counts are. As it's very important that we have the correct stitch count before we start round 5. If you've been following along with the pattern, you'll have found that you've already done our slip stitch round and round one of the front border. You've also done round one of the back border too, but at the moment we're just looking at the front border. We're now going to be using the same hoops that we worked with in the main body of our project. In my case, that's my five millimeter hook. I'm starting in round two with my color B and I'm going to be starting at the red line in from the corner. So counting my stitches, that's the fifth stitch along. Now we've identified we're working five stitches in from the corner, we need to have a look at where we start in the corner. We're actually going to be starting on that chain stitch. There's your two corner chain stitches. So the second chain stitch is the one we're interested in. One, two, three, four, five. And there we go. That's where I insert my hook into the back loop of the stitch. We're going to join our yarn with a chain stitch and then we're going to work double crochet, back loop only, all the way around until we come to the first corner. And when we get to the corner, we work two chains to get around the corner. Do remember, I work in UK terminology, so if you're a US crochier, this is single crochet, back loop only. I'm just about at my first corner. And when I get to the corner, there's two chains in it from the previous round. So we're going to work our double crochet back loop only into the first chain, then work two chains, which allows us to get around the corner. And then the next chain, again, we work a double crochet back loop only. And we're going to carry on working like this all the way around, remembering to add two chains at each corner. Round two is now complete and I'm going to join my first stitch to my last stitch with an invisible join. We'll give a quick recap on how to work an invisible join. Once you've threaded up your darning needle, you're going to insert your needle underneath the V part of the very first double crochet stitch, not the chain stitch, the double crochet stitch. Then you're going to insert your needle through the centre of the very last stitch. And there we go, we have our invisible join. And the ends now need to be woven in at the back. Round two is now completed and we've um, ticked it off. We're now looking at round three. However, over in the right hand side, it also says round three should be a multiple of four plus one. What this means is that our stitch count for each side should be divised both by four and it should have an extra stitch as well. So we're going to count our stitches in round three. In round three, we're going to be starting at our sixth stitch in from the corner. In round three, I'm going to start at the opposite end of my work. It's just so that all those woven ends don't appear all one round after the other. Counting in from the corner, I'm counting in my six stitches like I did on the previous round. Because I'm using round three as a counting round, I actually am going to insert stitch markers every 10 stitches. As before, I'm going to insert my hook into the back loop, create a chain stitch 
and then work double crochet back loop only all the way around making sure you add your chain two at each corner and when you get back to that first stitch you're going to join with an invisible join the difference being that you're going to every 10 or 20 stitches depending how you wish to work it add stitch markers so at the end of round three you can count your stitches I've now completed round three and you can see that I've got stitch markers added every 10 stitches. I'm now going to start to count how many stitches that I have for each side. I always use a diagram at this stage because I find it's a lot easier to actually work out how many stitches I need to adjust by when I can see it written down. Along the top I have 30 two stitches so I'm going to write that at the top of my diagram. The left hand side of my project I've got 44 stitches. Along the bottom I've got 10, 20, 30, two stitches again. And on the right hand side of my project I have got 45 stitches. At this stage I always mark the top of my work so there's no confusion as to what is the top. I just add a simple piece of yarn to ensure that I know what the top of my project is so that my project is in alignment with the way that I have actually worked the numbers out on my diagram. What we've worked out previously is our actual stitch count. We now need to work out the proper stitch count. So our stitch count for the top and bottom should be 33 stitches and the stitch count for the left and right sides should be 45 stitches. Looking at the numbers of our two diagrams we can see discrepancies. So we have to add one stitch at the top and the bottom and at the left hand side. The right hand side has got the correct amount of stitches. So I know I need to increase stitches, so I'm going to use round four to increase my stitch count. You may have to decrease your stitch count on round four. I'm going to draw another diagram box. This time the box is for round four and the stitch count will be different because every time you create a new round, you add two stitches to it. So in this case, at the end of round four, I should have 35 at the top and bottom and 47 stitches at each side. And this stitch count should work out as a multiple of 4 plus 3. If we divide 35 by 4, it gives us 8 with a remainder of 3 or plus 3. Dividing 47 gives us 11 with a remainder of 3, which again is our plus 3. So when I've completed round 4, my stitch count should be the same as that of my last diagram. So to make sure that I increase my stitches in the correct place, I've got one stitch to increase at each side. I'm actually going to work out on a diagram, you can see I like diagrams, where I'm actually going to insert that extra stitch. And I'm actually going to insert it in the centre of each side. So along the top I'm going to work 16 stitches, then make my increase and then work my next 16 stitches. At the left hand side, I'm going to work 22 stitches, make my increase and then work 22 stitches and the bottom is the same as the top, 16 an increase and then 16 other stitches. And of course the right hand side was correct so there's no increases there. I can see that I'm starting on the seventh stitch in from the corner so I'm counting as before and inserting my hook into the top loop of the seventh stitch. I'm going to join with a chain stitch and then carry on working our double crochet back loop only until I get to the 16th stitch. Once I'm happy I'm 16 stitches along I can now increase into that 16th stitch my extra stitch and to increase my extra stitch is I just work an extra double crochet back loop only into that 16th stitch. I'm now going to continue working my 16 stitches to the corner where I then will work my two chain to get round the corner 
and then I'm going to start counting 22 stitches and increase in my 22nd stitch the same way as I did in my 16th stitch. Continue with the round, increasing and decreasing as necessary and when you get back to the first stitch, join to it with an invisible join. I've now completed round four and my stitch markers have been added. I now want to just check that my actual stitch count on round four matches to what the stitch count should be on round four. My stitch count on round four should be 35 stitches at the top and the bottom and 47 stitches at each side. So I now need to actually count my project to ensure that I have this amount of stitches. Of course my stitch marker is still in at the front top of my project so counting along the top I can see that I've actually got five stitches after those 30 stitches so that's 35 stitches in the top it's always nice when you actually get the stitch count correct and then along the edge that first left edge it should be 47 stitches and I can see that I have got 47 stitches again along the bottom it should be 35 stitches and the right hand side should be 47 stitches. Now I'm confident that my stitch count is correct, I can remove my stitch markers. We're now ready to start round five. Round five is where our drop trebles are going to be starting. It's really important on round five that you start at the correct position and the correct position in round five is going to be stitch eight. We're going to start on stitch eight by inserting our hook and joining our new yarn with a chain stitch as we normally do. Looking at our chart, after we've worked the chain stitch, we've got one double crochet back loop stitch to work, and then we have our first drop treble. Remember our drop treble is working into the stitch two rows down with a treble stitch. Then we've got three double crochet stitches into the back loop to work. So that's three double crochet back loop stitches to work. So our drop treble and three double crochet back loop only stitches is our four stitch pattern repeat. And we're going to continue repeating those four stitches until we come to the black line at the corner and the pattern changes slightly to get round the corner. So keep repeating our four stitches until we are six stitches from the corner. When working corners, I always turn my chart to face the direction that I'm crocheting in. So I'm at that black line on the chart. I've now got one drop treble, three double crochets, another drop treble and one double crochet to work until I get to the two chains to take me around the corner. Quick recap, one drop treble, three double crochet back loop only, another drop treble into the chain stitches from two rows below, and then one more double crochet, and then we've reached the corner, so we work two chain stitches to get us around the corner. And then the pattern until the next black line is one double crochet back loop only, one drop treble, and three double crochet back loop only. And once we've completed those stitches, that is the end of our corner section. We're now ready to continue working a repeat pattern of one drop treble and three double crochet back loop only. Paying close attention to the chart when we come to the corner. Round five is now complete, so we're now going to turn our attention to round six. Looking at the chart, we're going to start round six on stitch nine. You've got the choice to either count nine stitches in from the corner or two stitches in from the last drop treble. I'm going to join my new yarn with a chain stitch as usual. I then have got one, two double crochet back loop only to work before I've got the first drop treble in this round to work. You should always know that you've got the drop treble in this round in the correct position as it comes immediately after the drop treble from round five. There are two more double crochet back loop only stitches to work 
and we've now worked our four stitch pattern repeat of one double crochet back loop only, one drop treble and two double crochet back loop only. That's our four stitch pattern repeat for this round that we're going to repeat until we get to the corner. We are now seven stitches from the corner so that means that we're actually ready to start our corner pattern. The corner pattern for this round is one double crochet back loop only, one drop treble, one double crochet back loop only, another drop treble and then three double crochet back loop only and that takes us to the corner two chains. And once we're around the corner it's three double crochet back loop only, one drop treble and two double crochet back loop only. And this completes the corner section for round six. Continue working your four stitch pattern repeat until you get to the corner, paying particular attention to the chart when you get to the corner sections. Round six is now complete, so let's look at round seven. On round seven, we can't start at the stitch 10 which is the one we should be starting at because there's a drop treble in it. Therefore, we're going to start at the stitch next to it, stitch 11 instead. So either count 11 stitches in from the corner or two drop trebles in from round six. Join your new colored yarn with a chain stitch as normal. And then we're going to work two double crochet back loop only, one drop treble, and just like in round six, the drop treble should come immediately after the drop treble that appeared in round six. And then we have one double crochet back loop only. And this is our four stitch pattern repeat for round seven. Continue repeating the four stitch pattern repeat until you get to the black line at the corner. I'm now eight stitches from the corner. So I've got two double crochet back loop only to work and then one drop treble. And that drop treble will sit very nicely into the space that's been left for it by the U of the two drop trebles from the previous round. After the drop treble, there are five double crochet back loop only to work till we get to the corner two chains. Once we go around the corner, We've another five double crochet back loop only to work and then one drop treble and one double crochet back loop only. Once we've worked these seven stitches, we've now completed the corner section for round seven. Continue working your four stitch pattern repeat around round seven and pay particular attention when you get to the corner section. Now we've completed round seven, all of our drop trebles are finished, so we just have three rounds of double crochet back loop only. It's now your choice whether you want to continue starting at the red line. If you do, you'll start on stitch 11, 12 and 13, as I've written in the chart, but it doesn't really matter which stitch you start on. Each round has a different colour and it's worked in double crochet back loop only, making sure you add your chain two at the corner and ending each round with an invisible join. I'm going to whiz through all three rounds and let you see what it looks like when I've completed all three rounds. All three rounds are now completed, which actually means that we've now finished the front section of our zigzag border. It's now time to turn our attention to the back section of our envelope border. We'll just have a quick recap on how to work the back of an envelope border. It's always worked in treble stitch. You work with a hook one size smaller than the one you worked in the main body of your project. You only work half the number of rounds as you did in the front border. So looking at our front border, it had 10 rounds in it. So that means that we should only be working five rounds for our back border. And the last point we need to remember is at the corner we're working two trebles, two chains and two trebles to get around the corner. 
and this is because the two trebles we're working makes up for only doing half the amount of rounds and this enables us to end up with the same amount of stitches as we ended with in the front border. We now know we've five rounds to work and we've worked round one so we've got four more rounds to work. Colours I'm going to use are going to be dependent on the amount of yarn that I've got left. I won't be using any more cream, I don't have enough, so I've got the grey and the yellow, that's what I'm going to be using. I want round five to end with yellow because my last round in the front border ended in yellow. So I'm starting with a smaller hook, so mine's is a four and a half millimetre hook because I worked with a five millimetre in the body. I'm inserting through both loops because I'm working normal treble stitches. And because it's a treble stitch, I need to work three chains to get to the height for my treble stitch. My colour scheme that I have chosen to go with is grey for this round, yellow for round three, grey for round four, and I already said that I wanted to work round five in yellow. We are going to work treble stitches all the way until we get to the corner. And remember, when we get to the corner, we work two trebles into that first chain. I'm just about at the corner here. Now I'm at the first chain for the corner, I'm going to work two trebles into the centre of this chain. That's the first one. And then the second treble. Now I'm going two chains to get around the corner. And then the next chain, I'm going to work another two trebles into it. So again, that's the first treble worked into that chain, and then the second treble. And then I can carry on working as I have been, working treble stitches all the way down this side. Continue working trebles all round round two. And when you get to the corners, just remember you're working two trebles two chains and two trebles at the corner. Now we've worked this small sample of our trebles on our round two, I just want to check that it's actually the same height as round four in the front, and it is, because round four of our front border should be equaling round two of our back border. Then we've got round three, round four and round five. Continue working your back border for the next three rounds just making sure that you join with invisible joins to the first treble stitch in each round. I've completed all four rounds of my back border and you can see my ends are tucking very neatly into that envelope that the front and the back have made. I'm now ready to start my last round with the yellow yarn that I've already decided upon. However, before I start this round, I must just check that I've ended round four with the correct amount of stitches. We want to ensure that round five ends with the same amount of stitches as the front border. So we're back to my diagrams and you can see at the end of round four we had 35 stitches at the top and bottom and 47 stitches at each side. I've created a little chart up to 10 rows and I've worked by adding two stitches each row that I know I had 47 stitches at the top and bottom and 59 stitches at each side when I ended round 10 of my front border. I'm just going to insert the round numbers for the back border. So round four is equal to round two at the back, round six, round three, round eight, round four, and round 10 is equal to round five of our back border. So this means on round four of our back border, we should have 43 stitches at the top and bottom and 55 stitches each side. I've added stitch markers to my round four so that I can count my stitches easily and put them into a new diagram. That cream yarn there is signifying that's the top of my back border and I'm now ready to count my back border. The top of my back border has got 40 stitches. The left side I'm going to just count that just now. I've got 53 stitches. The bottom's got 39 stitches and the right hand side has got 52 stitches. So we can see that there's discrepancies in all sides of my round four for my actual stitch count. 
So just looking at what I need to do, on the top I need to add three stitches, the left hand side I need to add two stitches, the bottom I need to add four stitches, and on the right hand side I need to add three stitches. I'm going to write down the stitch number that I need to increase my stitches on. So the top is going to be stitch 10, stitch 20 and stitch 30. So I can now see where I'm going to increase my stitches on each side. Round 6 is now complete and hopefully I have the same amount of stitches on the back border as I have on the front border now. I'm now ready to join my front border to my back border and I do this by using slip stitches. I'm going to start five stitches in from the corner and I'm going to be working in my back loops of the front border and the back loops of the back border stitch as well. So the back loops of both stitches count in five from the corner. Start with that first chain remember and count five stitches in. Once you've got both of those stitches on your hook you're ready to join your yarn with a chain stitch and you can see I'm still using my yellow. You're going to continue picking up the back loops of both the front and the back border and joining them with a slip stitch. So you're going to be working slip stitch back loop all the way along until you get to the corner chains and when you get to the corner chains you're still working slip stitches around the corner chains. There's no adding two chains at the corner this time. I'm just about back at the starting point. However, I want to take that initial end that I have from the beginning and weave it in now before I get back to the starting point. I'm just going to quickly weave in this very first end into the back of my back border here and then I'm ready to carry on working with my um, slip stitch round. I've now two stitches left to do, two more slip stitch back loop only, and then I'm ready to create an invisible join to that very first slip stitch. And I just work my invisible join as I usually do over the top of the initial chain. Thread up a darning needle as usual and look for that first slip stitch and we're inserting our needle under the V of the first slip stitch and then through the centre of our last slip stitch. We've only now got one end to deal with because we've already dealt with the first end. We're going to weave this end a few times through the back border. Once you've done a few little stitches into the back border, then pull your end of your yarn quite tight and then snip it off. And by doing that, you should be able to bury the um, end into the centre of your envelope border. So our zigzag envelope border is now complete to both the front and the back. As you can now see, this is a very useful border to actually have in your repertoire as it is suitable for most projects because of its four stitch repeat. If you have found this video tutorial useful, please do subscribe to Daisy Knot's YouTube channel. Thank you!